clock is ticking when it comes to getting those ballots dropped off and the votes cast. Again, we start with our live team coverage tonight. News 5 Sam Kramer. He is live inside the El Paso County Citizen Service Center. And Sam, a lot of last minute voters out there. Yeah, you're absolutely right. It's those folks that are just getting off of work and here trying to beat that seven o'clock deadline. You're looking here behind me. This is the voting center. People are still filing in. The line goes outside into the hallway. It's a well oiled machine here. Everyone in line by seven o'clock will be able to submit that ballot. Now, just a couple of minutes ago, uh, we were invited upstairs by the clerk and recorder's office to get a look at the ballot operations center, ballot processing center, where, you know, dozens of volunteers separated into bipartisan teams are processing those ballots or taking them out of the secure envelope, then out of the secrecy sleeve to put them into these bins that are locked. Then they get sent over across the hall to the counting center where they'll be counted soon. Uh, we're expecting the first round of those results to come at 715. So again, as you guys said before, the clock is ticking now under an hour to get those votes in uh, before they are counted. And we'll see those results later tonight. For now, I'm always watching out for you, Southern Colorado. I'm Sam Kramer, News 5. Exciting to see all those voters, mm -hmm. Sam. Thank you. And several statewide races being decided decided tonight, including governor, secretary of state and attorney general and News 5 has crews in the Mile High City. Yeah, let's continue our team coverage tonight with News 5 Zach Faxon uh, hanging with the Democrats who are hoping to keep the governor's seat, Zach. Yeah, that's for sure. If uh, Congressman Jared Polis wins tonight, it would secure the governor's mansion for Democrats for 16 years running. Also, would establish a bit of history. It would be the first ever elected openly gay governor in United States history. Now, Polis, as you know, has made some bold proposals during his campaign, including going 100% renewable energy in Colorado. Uh, that is one of his primary goals. He has led his Republican opponent, Tra State Treasurer Walker Stapleton, since the primaries ended, and it would be considered an upset in this room if he were indeed to lose. Democrats also closely watching uh, a, the 6th Congressional District race. That is the eastern suburbs of Denver. Mike Kaufman, the incumbent Republican there who's been there for a decade, is considered very vulnerable and beatable by his opponent Jason Crow in this election, the Democratic challenger. If that happens, expect this room to absolutely erupt tonight. Now, doors just about to open here. We saw Governor Hickenlooper come in just a moment ago. He, I probably would assume is going to be answering some questions about his own political future throughout the night. But the party's about to get started here, and we'll be covering it for you throughout the evening. Always watching out for you. Zach Thaxton, News 5. Zach, thanks. Let's continue our team coverage in the Mile High City. News 5's Bill Folsom. He is with the Republican Party this evening. Bill, uh, set the mood for us there. Still early. Yeah, we are in South Denver, and this is where the Republicans will be watching the numbers come in. Right now, they are in fight mode. They're out pushing people to get out to the polls because things are close in a lot of their races. This is where Walker Stapleton will be on here later on tonight. He is the current state treasurer who wants to take over in the governor's office. As Zach mentioned, he has consistently been behind in the polls. But Republican leadership here tonight is saying they are in for a fight. They are not counting out their candidate. In fact, they look back to the race between Trump and Clinton when Clinton had the lead nine out of ten times in the polls, but Trump came out the winner. Republicans here are hoping for the same thing tonight. There's also the Secretary of State race going on with Wayne Williams, who is from Colorado Springs. He is the incumbent, but his challenger, Jenna Griswold, has tightened that race, spending more money to uh, try and take over that office. Attorney General is happening here with George Brockler. He is the man with a prosecuting background. He's going against Phil Weiser from Boulder. He's the uh, law academic who wants to take over that office. And then the big one that Zach was talking about is the 6th Congressional District. That is a representative with Mike Kaufman up here in the Denver area. But even though he doesn't represent down in Southern Colorado, it is a race being watched statewide also nationwide. There's a lot of money being spent on that race. If Jason Crow can take over his incumbent spot, that could change the majority in Washington, D.C. Everybody's going to be watching the numbers tonight. We will we'll be here watching as well. Watching out for you in South Denver, Bill Folsom, News 5. Bill, thanks. Let's talk about those congressional races a little closer to home in the 3rd Congressional District. That covers Costilla, Huerfano, Pueblo counties, basically Pueblo and then the entire western slope, all those counties to the west. Republican incumbent Scott Tipton in his fifth term up against Democrat Diane Mitch Bush. She has spent a lot of money and the conventional wisdom right now is the district that is in play tonight for the Democrats. If you listen to the political pundits, it's being closely watched from a national level. 
Now, out on the Eastern Plains in Congressional District 4, Republican Ken Buck, you remember him, ran for U.S. Senator uh, four years ago, is seeking re-election against Democrat Karen McCormick. He went from that Senate race to the Congressional race. And in Congressional District 5, a very large uh, district, including a number of counties locally, El Paso, Fremont, Teller, Chafee Park, Incumbent Republican Doug Lamborn looking for a sixth term in Washington. He is up against Democratic challenger Stephanie Rose Spaulding. And there are a few races for sheriff in Southern Colorado. In El Paso County, current sheriff Bill Elder looking to hold his position against Grace A. Sweeney Mauer. And in Fremont County, three people running for the position Jim Biker resigned from earlier this year. That's including Alan Cooper, Boyd Canterbury, and Skip Moreau. And in Pueblo County, Sheriff Kirk Taylor running unopposed with the exception of a write-in candidate. And in Pueblo, voters have 16 candidates to choose from as the city votes for its first mayor in decades. That race is just one of several contests we will be watching tonight. And if there is no clearer, clear winner in the mayor race, it will trigger a runoff election. Yeah, let's get a closer look at that uh, contentious race. Wide field, as uh, Elizabeth mentioned. Let's check in with the county election headquarters and our uh, Andy Cohen with more on this. Uh, very intriguing here, Andy, tonight. Absolutely, Robin Elizabeth. In fact, clerk and recorder Gilbert Ortiz has already set a date for a runoff election. If it comes to that, he scheduled it for January 22nd. He wanted to put it far enough out to be able to finish with the canvas of tonight's election, as well as accept any uh, protests to the results that may or may not come up from tonight's election. Now, in the meantime, we can tell you turnout in this election is running pretty close here in Pueblo County to what we saw in the 2014 midterms. There were slightly more than 60,000 ballots cast four years ago. According to the latest numbers, this is a few hours old, about 54,000 ballots today in Pueblo County with still several people getting in line to vote this evening. Now, Clerk Ortiz told us there is one group of voters where he expected turnout to be a little bit higher and it hasn't been, and that's with millennials. I think millennials are actually bigger than, or more, there's more of them than baby boomers at this point. Um, so was, I think it's kind of disappointing the number of millennials that are out there voting right now. Some other races we're watching. Pueblo has a handful of state house and senate district races, as well as an open county commissioner seat. So we're going to be tracking those results for you tonight. And Pueblo School District 60 asking its voters for a mill levy override, basically a sale, a property tax increase. We'll let you know the results on that as well. Watching out for you, Pueblo County. Andy Cohen, News 5. Andy, thanks. And stay with News 5. Beginning at 7 o'clock, we will have those updates as the results start coming in. Around 7.15, we expect the first batch to come out. Uh, News 5 at 10 will be an hour long this evening. We'll have live reaction from all of our reporters out there. Big races out of Denver, Colorado Springs, Pueblo. You can also follow the numbers by downloading the News 5 app. Do that right now. It's free to download in the App Store and a Google Play, and it is a great tool to track all these races and issues tonight.